Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is Glossy Philosophy. My name is Jansen Finman and today you are tuned in for a book talk. Today we are talking about the book From Holmes to Sherlock by a Swedish author whose name I'm going to attempt to pronounce, Matthias Bostrom. And this is definitely an epic, epic read. So let's dive in. Let's start with the author. So, as I said, the author is Swedish, but he is a member of the Baker Street Irregulars. If you haven't read this book, <laughs> the Baker Street Irregulars is basically a Sherlock Holmes club, and in order to be in a lot of these Sherlock Holmes clubs, you have to know a lot of detail about Sherlock Holmes, whether that's about Holmes himself, or Watson and his apparently many marriages, um, Moriarty, all the different characters, and on top of that, if Arthur Conan Doyle, who's the author of Sherlock Holmes, ever had any, like, time lapses or if he had any holes in the stories. And then on top of that, you also have to have information and knowledge of, like, a lot of the offshoots that have happened with Sherlock Holmes. So, in order to be in a club like that, you have to know your stuff. And this guy definitely knows his stuff and I just love that he went to the next level and wrote like basically a 500 page book on the subject that is obviously near and dear to his heart and takes us from the beginning of the story of Sherlock Holmes and Arthur Conan Doyle all the way to the BBC um, miniseries called Sherlock. So that is a little bit about the author. Now let's kind of dive into a quick summary of what this book is actually about. So there's a lot of detail. <laughs> we will kind of quick summary, right? Um, so we start with the idea for the BBC miniseries Sherlock and then we just go way back in time to the origins of who is Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, where does he come from, what was he doing before Sherlock, and then also just like who is Sherlock Holmes kind of created after and like who's Watson, why England, and then after that we go into how it became such a major sensation and how Arthur Conan Doyle wanted to get rid of it and then was not able to because people wrote him so many letters. And then from there, what happens after he passes away and how his family deals with the Sherlock Holmes legacy and how like radio and film and musicals, so stage, theater, how everybody just loves this character so much that they want to create like everything, <laughs> every possible entertainment outlet they want to make about Sherlock Holmes and in many different kind of formats. So that is basically the gist of what this book is about. It is super, super detailed, and you learn about, like, anybody who possibly touched hands or, like, touched the story of Sherlock Holmes from illustrators to songwriters to actors to playwrights to just everybody, literally everybody. So just kind of like a caveat if you are not really into like origin stories or like, hey, what did happen to that illustrator? This book might not be for you. Um, I think the best way to describe this book is if you've seen um, my book talk on Malcolm Gladwell's The Tipping Point or you've read Malcolm Gladwell's Tipping Point, this is a real life version of The Tipping Point. So we go from Sherlock Holmes like who is this guy? Like, he seems really interesting to just like worldwide fame and we need more, more, more. So much do we need more that people will write letters to Sherlock, to actually Sherlock Holmes, the character, even though he's not real. They think that he is real. They will write letters to him and they will also write to Arthur Conan Doyle again to bring him back and then once he passes I mean people just kind of take up the lead and want to write so many more stories about Sherlock Holmes. A few months ago my husband surprised me with a lovely anniversary date which was to go to the theater 
and see a Sherlock Holmes play that was being put on and it was really interesting and it was very thought provoking and I thought that the author, the playwright, did a great job of really taking how I think of Sherlock Holmes and how I think of Watson and it was not a modern interpretation but kind of modernizing it a little bit um, but also just like giving you everything that you would want in a Sherlock Holmes play, thriller. There was action, there was love, there was confusion, and then of course there was like the actual let's figure out what's going on. So that's kind of what started this. Then I went to the library to check out The Tempest, which I did a book talk on a long time ago, and I just kind of randomly came across this book from Holmes to Sherlock, and I'm, I mean, I thought I was a big Sherlock Holmes fan, but I'm not even close to a fan, apparently. So my husband and I have always, like, been a huge Jeremy Brett fan who plays uh, Sherlock Holmes. Again, I think it's BBC, and that was a while ago in, like, the 80s, around the 80s, 70s, 80s, and we just really liked that. And then I remember as a child also watching um, The Great Mouse Detective from Disney, and <laughs> like all of that stuff is in here. So that was really exciting to read, and it was really fun to kind of pull on those threads and see what was happening behind the situation and see how Sherlock Holmes so many times, like, saved a production company, or in Disney's case, The Great Mouse Detective, which is Basil of Baker Street, and basically Sherlock Holmes is a mouse. Um, it saved the animation studio. They were gonna cut it, and then after The Great Mouse Detective, which was like, it was a hit, but it wasn't a major hit, after that, they write The Little Mermaid, so bananas, and then the guy that's like working on some of the CG for that movie ends up founding Pixar. I mean, the amount of names, like, dropping that is going on in this book is just bananas. I very rarely do I read a book where I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to tell somebody this incredible information. But that happened, like, every couple of pages because the story of Sherlock Holmes has touched so many lives from presidents, again, to Disney, to radio, to just like, so many people. So, so many people. <laughs> it is quite a thread to pull on, and I applaud the author for pulling on all of the threads and figuring out all this information and really going in depth on all this stuff. There's a lot of kind of tragic family stuff that happens in the Conan Doyle family with taxes and copyright and who gets all the money from the stories of Sherlock Holmes and who doesn't and you know it's too bad because this character is so well loved and then some of the family didn't respect that very well and they certainly didn't respect themselves so that is a little bit of a bummer and there is a lot in the book about copyright laws and who's allowed to use the image of Sherlock Holmes and who's not. So maybe if you're a lawyer, you'd really like that. I eventually had to kind of skip or skim over some of it because it was just a little bit too intense for me. But when we get to, like, the stories about Disney or the stories about the radio and Jeremy Brett and also just um, the actor who like, really brought Sherlock Holmes to life originally on stage. I mean, he was huge. He really, he really made the idea of Sherlock Holmes come alive, and that was definitely a tipping point in the Sherlock Holmes story. And it helped also bring Sherlock Holmes to the Americas, so that's super exciting. Um, there's also some really cool photos that are in here kind of featuring a lot of people that had, you know, good stuff to do with the movies and just the creation and you get to see Arthur Conan Doyle and his wife and it's just awesome. So I would 
If you've ever been curious about anything dealing with Sherlock Holmes, it's definitely worth at least a skim. And so it does go very chronological. Um, you can easily find things that you are interested in and things that you're not, you can just kind of skip over. The other thing that I found so interesting was, and I already mentioned this, but people really, from the very beginning, really thought that Sherlock Holmes was a real person. And the idea of creating, like being a creator and creating something that surpasses who you are is just kind of mind-blowing. So we find out that, like, <clears throat> after Sir Arthur Conan Doyle passes away, his family, some of his family want to go on book tours and, you know, continue to promote the stories of Sherlock Holmes. And they're just always baffled by the fact that nobody wants to talk about their father. They want to talk about Sherlock Holmes. And they talk about him like he is a real person. So there's a point in the book when you learn that there is a person at a bank who is responsible for answering all the Dear Sherlock Holmes letters. And you also find out that when Sir Arthur Conan Doyle was alive and people would write to Sherlock Holmes through him, you he takes some of the letters that are the most interesting to him and he will answer them either through himself or through Sherlock. And I just think that's really sweet. And Sir Arthur Conan Doyle actually ends up winning some mystery cases, sometimes in the court and sometimes just helping people figure things out, which is really cool. So kind of going back to who is Sherlock Holmes and where did he come from? Arthur Conan Doyle was supposed to be a doctor and he was supposed to go in for training on eyes and maybe some other things. He was kind of just trying to figure it out. He goes into this big lab and he gets this incredible, incredible teacher. And this teacher is able to just like shoot through patients so quickly and see things that no one else is seeing and diagnose them correctly so quickly. And as you're reading, as you're reading that part, you're like, oh my gosh, that's Sherlock Holmes. And sure enough, that's who he based the character on. And the character of Watson, the author, the author infers that that is actually Sir Arthur Conan Doyle because he's a struggling doctor and so is Watson. And then he finds someone who can like, you know, do the crime fighting, solving mystery thing, and his life gets more exciting. So that is basically the gist of the book and some things to kind of watch out for and I would definitely recommend if you are interested in this checking out a lot of the um the video and the like mini series and things that are available because the interpretations of Sherlock Holmes are kind of they all have like a central core of who this very intelligent detective is, but everybody plays it a little bit differently and it's really, really interesting. Like Jeremy Brett plays it one way, Benedict Cumberbatch plays it another way, but I like them both. And a cool thing that happens in the end is that when the BBC miniseries Sherlock comes about, people want more so badly that they start watching the older versions of Sherlock Holmes that have been made with like Jeremy Brett and other actors and they start to fall in love. So basically I re-fell in love with Sherlock Holmes after reading this and I'm excited to watch some of the older versions as well because I really enjoyed Sherlock from the BBC. So <laughs> in conclusion, again this book is epic. It's about 500 pages long. Do not try to speed read your way through this. Um, I mean, sometimes the chapters are so dense that you have to break them up depending on how much time you spend reading during the day. And, but there are just like so many beautiful nuggets of inclusion and just like ping, 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 like five degrees to Sherlock Holmes over here, which is just mind blowing. So it's really interesting. Um, do feel free to skip over anything that doesn't interest you. But I would recommend it if you've ever been interested in Sherlock Holmes and 
yeah, give it a shot. So go down to your library, give it a shot, and if you really love it, then you can buy it. And if, you know, you're like, I don't know if I want to read that again, then you just rented it and it's fine. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this book talk on From Holmes to Sherlock. It was a really fun and interesting read for me. It did take me a very long time to read it though. Um, I definitely read a couple other books in between because I did have to take a little bit of a break <laughs> during all the copyright stuff that happens after Conan Doyle passes away. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this. I normally do fashion videos every Wednesday and beauty videos every Friday. This Friday I am doing a look based on Sherlock Holmes, so that'll be really fun to watch. And yeah, I'll be back with the regular fashion videos next week. Definitely check out my other book talks if you like this kind of chit-chatty, book talky thing. And don't forget to hit that thumbs up, the subscribe, check me out on other social media, and I'll see you very soon for another video. Bye!